Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number one in the authentication module titled Username Enumeration via Different Responses. All right, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course, and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portsvigure.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Select all labs. Do a search on authentication labs and select lab number one titled username enumeration via different responses. All right, let's get started. This lab is vulnerable to username enumeration and password brute force attacks. It has an account with a predictable username and password, which can be found in the following word lists and they give you candidate usernames and candidate passwords. To solve the lab, enumerate a valid username, brute force this user's password and access their account page. Okay, so the target goal over here is to first identify a valid username, so to enumerate a valid username, and then brute force the password for this username and access the user's account. All right, let's access the lab. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp, and so all my requests are being passed in my Burp proxy. I am using the professional version of Burp because we will be using the intruder functionality, which is heavily throttled in the community edition. So if you're using the community edition, it'll take you quite some time to complete the lab. All right, the first thing that we're going to do is click on my account and then log in with a random username and password. So let's say test test, go to HTTP history and look at the post request. Now over here, it's to the slash login endpoint and it takes in a username and a password. The first thing that we're going to try to do is enumerate the username and then from there enumerate the password. So let's send this to Intruder. In Intruder, click Clear, and then just add the payload for the username because that's the item that we're trying to enumerate. Next, go to Payloads, keep it at Simple List, and then go to the Exercise and get the candidate usernames. So let's copy this. and paste it in here and then click on start attack. So what we're looking for is to see if we give it a valid username, if it responds in a different way than if it's an invalid username. So over here for an invalid username, the length is 2,984 and I'm looking for a different length that potentially outputs a different response. So let's do a search on length and here we go. So we have 2,986 for the username Arkansas. And if we look at the response over here, let's render. You could see over here it says incorrect password, whereas if you give it an invalid username, it says invalid username. So this difference in response allows you to enumerate the list of valid usernames in the system. So that's vulnerability one, the fact that it outputs a verbose error message on the login page. So let's just copy this username and put it in our notes. So let's go to Visual Studio and say the username was Arkansas. Now let's enumerate the password. We do that in the same way. Let's close this, discard, and then go to positions over here. I'm just going to send a new request to intruder. 
just in case I need this one later. Again, we clear this time the username we already know, so it's our Kansas. And the password is the one that we want to test. So let's click on add. And then for payloads over here, we need the candidate passwords payload. So let's close this one and open this one. Okay, let's copy that. And then paste it in here. And then click on start attack. So when it comes to this one, I'm not looking for a different length. What I'm looking for is a different status code. Because if we do have a valid username and password, it should redirect me to the My Accounts page. And so the status code should be 302. So let's search on status code. And here we go. We do get a 302 for Matthew. And if you look over here in the response, it redirects you to My Account. So now we have the username and password. Let's put them in here. So it was Arkansas. And the second one was Matthew. Hit login. And you could see it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. So there's a few vulnerabilities over here. The first one is the verbose error message that allows you to enumerate a list of valid usernames in the system. And then the second one is there's no brute force protection on the login page. So it allowed us to perform 100 requests within less than a minute and it didn't uh, block our IP address. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability using Burp Intruder. Now we usually script the exploit in Python. However, we're not gonna do that today because there's already tools out there that do that. So if you're interested in an automated tool that is different from Burp Intruder, look into something called Hydra, which takes in a list of usernames and a list of passwords, and then it tries every possibility until it finds a valid account. All right, in the next lab, we'll look at another case of a broken authentication vulnerability. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.